So, um, I figured I'd do another video doing a little more in-depth look at my Ham Radio Go Box. So what I have here is an Elinco DR635 mounted in an Apache 2800 rugged mobility case. These, this radio setup is pretty simple, it's pretty basic, there's nothing truly fancy about it. It's very simply made. So. I just want to go through and show you guys how I mounted some of the hardware, how I did some of the stuff, and just some of the components of the kit itself. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as I said, this is an Apache 2800 case. So what I did is simply for the back plate here, I took a thin piece of wood. It's the same type of wood that you would find on like a pegboard, for example. It's just a thin piece of wood. Durable, but thin. And on these cases, not all of them, but on some of these cases, you'll find studs in the back of the lid. The cool part about that is, is it gives you a place to screw in components if you choose to, like what I did here with the wooden board. The wood board is just painted with an aircraft gray color. There's nothing more fancier than that. I thought it would look good with the the orange color, it's the only reason I did that. And then for the remote head kit that you can get for the Linko is what I used to uh, remove the head from the radio and put it up here. Because this is a remote head radio, you can do that a lot easier. So back here, there's just the mounting screws holding this to the wood. And then over here I have a screw and on a couple of washers and behind that is a nut just holding the mic holding the screw in place so that I have a place to hang the mic up when it's not in use. For the antennas what I have here is just a regular mobile antenna. This is a folding style, a Brie style, a Brie, I think Brie is the name of the company that makes it antenna hooked to a PL259 adapter going into the back of the radio with an elbow like this. This is an extension coax um, so that I can extend this antenna somewhere else or I can extend it to my mag mount mobile whip antenna. So this is basically just an automobile antenna that's got a mag mount base on it so you can clamp to some place that's metal like top of a garden shed or something like that. Or in my case I like to put it on the top of a tripod and use it that way just so it gives it a little more distance from the radio, but it also gets it a little higher than ground level or case radio level. So for the power, back there you'll see I have a power supply uh, hooked into the radio currently, and that's what's running it. So I have the ability to plug it into a wall and run the radio off of AC uh, power. When I'm out in the field, I like to use batteries, just like most people. So what I have here is just a battery cable, so I can screw it onto a the, onto a battery. I use a motorcycle battery a lot when I'm using this. Uh, you can also hook it to a car battery. Uh, you can also hook it to um, quite a variety of batteries, including project and lawn or garden batteries. And then over here, I have a cigarette power, cigarette um, plug adapter uh, for using in a vehicle or car, or using that type of um, plug if I have access to something like that. So I have some pretty decent versatility with this kit. And of course, you know, I have um, documentation equipment in there. I have a knife fog uh, in there, two pencils, a pen, and of course a mini station log so that I can keep track of uh, the stations I'm talking to and things like that. So this is pretty much a very simple kit. This is nothing too extraordinary. Um, the other questions I get sometimes is people will ask me, how did I mount the radio? Because this radio is in here. It's, you know, it's, it's not coming out. What I did is I used the original radio mounting bracket and at the bottom here, I just cut out the the foam padding 
that comes in the bottom of these cases. And I just laid two strips of ad adhesive industrial Velcro. So this is just Velcroed in here. I can still, if I pull on it hard enough and hold on to the case, I could take this portion of the radio out of the case. So if I want to replace the radio, I can. Um, so this is essentially just, the box itself is not modified at all, uh, apart from screwing in this bracket back here. The box is pretty much intact. There's no holes in the box, so it's a little more impervious to weather. And uh, it could take probably, I don't know if I would trust it floating down a river, but you know, if properly sealed, it, it probably would survive that as well. And of course, safety orange exterior, so it's a little more visible. So if there's an emergency, I can uh, have a better chance of finding it quickly. This isn't my only go kit either. I've built multiple go, go kits over the years. Um, this is actually the case off of one of another one that I'm going to be building soon. And then up here is a handheld radio go kit. So instead of using a mobile radio, in here I have handheld radios. Everything is battery powered uh, for the most part. So yeah, that's my radio go box. It's like I said, it's not super complicated. It's not super complex. I don't think it's a project that, you know, I don't think it's a project that's super hard to make. A lot of the components take time to find or buy. Most everything minus the case and um, the piece of wood, you can find at HRO. Okay, I mean, these screws, like I said, these are repurposed screws. Uh, I Like all good ham radio operators, I started off with CBs. And, you know, citizen band radios come with mounting hardware because, you know, that you want to mount a CB radio in your truck or your car. That's what these screws are. These are just the mounting screws from some old uh, Cobra CB radios that I have. So, so there you go. Like I said, it's not very complicated. Um, hopefully this inspires you to build your own kit.